Hello friends, uh, welcome to Learners Planet. Uh, friends, this is our ninth session for real functions. In the previous session, we discussed uh, some problems based on finding out the domain of a given function. We discussed the problems based on trigonometric logarithmic functions. In this session, uh, we will be taking some more problems uh, on finding out the domain of a given function. And uh, you just have your paper and pen with you and start solving the problems with me. So let's begin the session. Now we have this problem here. Uh, we have to find out the domain of this function. So in the numerator, we have x squared minus 4. That's the uh, expression under square root. So it should be greater than or equal to 0. That means x minus 2, x plus 2 should be greater than or equal to 0. So x minus 2, 2. That means x should belong minus infinity to minus 2 union 2 to infinity where minus 2 and 2 are included right now in this case 2 minus x uh, for cos inverse x x uh, lies between minus 1 to 1 right so this 2 minus x should be greater than or equal to minus 1 and it should be less than or equal to 1 right so when 2 minus x is greater than equal to minus 1, x is less than equal to 3, okay? This is the second thing. And the third thing is um, 2 minus x is less than equal to 1, that means x is greater than equal to 1. So this is the third thing, right? Now uh, we have to find out the intersection of the three expressions. This and this should be true and uh, this should be true. So let's draw the number line. That's minus infinity minus 2 to infinity, right? Then we have 3 and we have 1. Okay, now what? First of all, x now this of minus infinity to minus 2 and 2 to infinity. Okay, then x is less than equal to 3. So, this is the situation that x is greater than or equal to 1. That means this is the situation. Now, you can see this from this point to this point. This, this, this. Okay, all the three conditions are satisfied, right? From 2 to 3. Okay, so x should belong or the domain of uh, this function is 2 to 3. Okay? So that's easy. Now we have uh, this problem. Here we have trigonometry as well as logarithm. So sin inverse, this is suppose x. So this quantity should lie between minus 1 to 1, right? That means log 2 x by 2 should be greater than or equal to minus 1 and it should be less than or equal to 1. Apart from that, x should be positive, right? Uh, because um, uh, logarithm of the negative quantity as well as 0 is not at all defined, right? So, x should be greater than 0. That is a preliminary condition, okay? Now, the same thing we will be doing. Just, uh, this is minus 1. I write log 2 uh, to the base 2 and that's minus 1, right? So, now it's uh, uh, both the side the base is 2. So, that's greater than 1. So, the sign of inequality will be retained. So, x by 2 is greater than or equal to 1 by 2. That means x is greater than or equal to 1. Right? And from here, I can write this one as, this one as log 2 to the base 2. That means x by 2 should be greater, uh, less than or equal to 2. That means x should be less than or equal to 4. Right? So this is the condition. This is the condition. And x is greater than 0. That is already fulfilled in these, in these two conditions. Right? That means x should be greater than or equal to 1. And x should be less than or equal to 4. That means x should be between 1 to 4. Both of them are included. Right? So that was interesting and simple as well. Now let's see this one. Here, uh, sine inverse 3 minus x by logar logarithm of modulus of x minus 2. 
So the first thing is 3 minus x should be greater than minus 1 and uh, 3 minus x should be less than or equal to 1, right? So x is less than or equal to 4 and x is greater than or equal to 2. So these uh, are the expression derived by uh, or the conditions derived by this non-log of x minus 2. Now, we have to be careful that in the denominator, 0 should not be there because the term, the expression will be undefined in this, in this case. And this expression should not be negative, right? So, modulus of x minus 2 should not be equal to 0. That means mod x should not be equal to 2, right? Apart from that, log 1 is also 0. So, in fact, modulus of x minus 2 should not even equal to 1. That means mod x should not be equal to 3. That means x should not be minus 3 or 3. Okay? And precisely, mod x minus 2 should be greater than 0. So, mod x should be greater than 2. That means if I draw the number line, that's 2, that's minus 2. That means x should be greater than 2 or x should be less than minus 2, right? If x is greater than 2, then mod x will be greater than 2. If x is less than minus 2, then also mod x will be greater than 2, right? Now we have to plot the results. So I draw the number line once again. So that's 2. Then we have 3, then we have 4, then we have uh, minus 2, right? Now x should be less than or uh, equal to 4, that means this. x should be greater than or equal to 2, that means this. Then we have x is greater than 2, that means, okay x is less than minus 2. So that's, suppose it is minus infinity than this, right? So precisely, uh, we can see the acceptable range is 2 to 4, right? Okay, so acceptable range greater than 2, not equal to 2, so 2 to 4. But 4 can be included, right? But we have this condition also. Right, that is mod modulus of x should not be equal to 3. That means uh, minus 3 and 3, both of them are included. Minus 3 is already not there in this range. So we need to deduct, we need to delete just 3. Right, so from uh, 2 to 3 and then 3 to 4. Okay, so this expression and this, both of them are same. Okay, so that's pretty interesting and easy. Uh, I hope you are clear. Now that's an interesting question. Here uh, we are given a box function also and uh, sec inverse x. Now sec inverse x is defined for uh, the values of r. I, I just write it over here. Sec inverse x defined where x belongs to r minus minus 1 to 1. Right? So that's uh, the values of x for which sec, uh, inverse x is defined, right? Now, apart from that, this quantity that is in the denominator as well as in the square root, right? So, x minus box x should not be equal to 0 and x minus box x should be in fact greater than 0, right? Uh, now, x is always greater than box x. Right? Because box is, is just the integral value and x is the integral plus fractional part we can say. So x is always greater than box x. Only when this x is integer, x will be equal to box x. Right? So when x is integer, x will be equal to box x. Otherwise, in all the remaining cases, x will be greater than box x. Right? So if x is greater than box x, then the quantity that is in the square root will be positive. Right? So, and it will not be 0, obviously. Right? So, uh, in, the in the numerator, uh, we have this condition. And in the denominator, we have this condition that x should not be equal to integer. Right? So, if x is integer, this expression will be 0. Right? So, 
uh, we have uh, directly we can go from options so that's this okay so that's pretty simple uh, from all the real numbers we are deducting this minus 1 to 1 as well as all the values of x belongs to z right so these are the favorable values you just can concentrate on this these all these values are deducted right so that's this an important concept okay uh, friends, uh, I'm taking enough problems uh, on uh, finding out the domain of a given function. So you find yourself comfortable after doing these many problems. Now here, sine inverse x minus 3 and divided by root of 9 minus x square. The first thing, x minus 3 should be greater than or equal to minus 1. x minus 3 should be less than or equal to 1. And 9 minus x square should be greater than 0. Not equal to 0, but greater than 0. That means x square minus 9 should be less than 0. So let's solve this. So this is x minus 3, x plus 3 less than 0. That means x should be between minus 3 to 3. Right? Both of them are not included. And from this, x should be greater than or equal to 2. And from this, x should be less than or equal to 4, right? Now, we have to plug the three results. I draw the number line. Now, this is minus 3, this is 2, this is 3, and this is 4. Now, x should be greater than or equal to 2, right? Less than 4, so that's the complete line. Then, from minus 3 to 3, so that's minus 3 to 3. So, we can see the portion common is 2 to 3, right? 3 is not included, but 2 is included. So, 2 is included and 3 is not included. So, this is the correct option. Okay, so what is the domain of this function? 2 to 3, where 2 is included, 3 is not. Okay? Now, we have this uh, problem, but twisted, complicated. Here, uh, we have to find out the domain of this function and uh, we can see that's it's a sixth root of this function that means even uh, root right that means the quantity under this root should be positive so i can say 4 raised to x plus 8 raised to 2 by 3 8 raised to 2 by 3 is actually can be written as 4 raised to x minus 2 minus 52 minus 2 raised to or I can say 4 raised to x minus 1. Now this quantity should be greater than or equal to 0, right? So that's, uh, I assume 4 raised to x to be suppose t. So this is t plus this is t by, that's 4 raised to 2. So that's 60 minus 52 minus 4 raised to x is t by and that should be greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Now we can take LCM of this. Uh, so that's 16 plus that is 16t plus t minus 4t should be greater than or equal to 52 into 16. Okay. So, 16 and 117, 17 minus 4 is 13t. So, 13t should be greater than 52 into 16. So, t should be greater than 64. Okay. Now, what is t? That is 4 is to x. That means 4 is to x should be greater than equal to 4 is to 3. That means x should be greater than equal to 3. Or we can say the domain of this function will be 3 to infinity. Okay. 3 to infinity. Right? Now we see this problem. Here, uh, we have to find out the domain of this given function. Uh, that's pretty easy. 4 minus x square should not be equal to 0. So, x square should not be equal to 4. That means, x should not be equal to plus or minus 2. Right? Now here, uh, the only condition is uh, the logarithm of the negative uh, quantity is not at all defined. That means 
x cube minus x should be greater than 0, right? So let's factorize this. That's x, x squared minus 1, that means x minus 1, x plus 1, and that should be greater than 0. So let's mark the points on number line. It's minus 1, 1. Uh, since we want the quantity to be greater than 0, that means it is greater than 0 between minus 1 to 0 and 1 to infinity. So minus 1 to 0 union 1 to infinity, right? Now we have to plug these two conditions. Uh, so minus 1 to 0, no problem, but from uh, 1 to infinity, we need to deduct 2, right? So first of all, we need to go to 1 to 2, then 2 to infinity, excluding 2, right? So that we can see over here, that's minus 1 to 0 and then 1 to 2 and 2 to infinity. What does this mean? That means only 2 is excluded, right? So only 2 is excluded, that means the denominator will not be 0. Minus 2 is already excluded because that is less than minus 1, right? So this is the correct answer, okay? Now see this, here, um, base of the logarithm should not be equal to 1 and it should be greater than 0. So 3 plus x should be greater than 0. So x should be greater than minus 3. Then 3 plus x should not be equal to 1. That means x should not be equal to minus 2. Right? So this is uh, from this. Now x square minus 1 should be greater than 0. That means x minus 1, x plus 1 should be greater than 0. That means if we draw the number line, x should be from minus infinity to minus 1, union 1 to infinity. Now these are the problems, uh, they are part of competitive exams, right? So you don't have to show the working. So what you can do, you can eliminate the options, right? See, if we see the options one by one, see, uh, x should not be equal to minus 2. But if we see option A, here, x belongs to minus 3 to minus 1. That means minus 2 is included. So it is not true. Right? Here we can see, uh, or here just take option B. Here, minus 3 is included. So even it is wrong. Here also minus 3 is included. So here it is wrong. Now this is correct one. Minus 3 to minus 2. Yes then 1 to infinity. Okay, so this one is correct. So 3 are eliminated, the automatically the fourth option is correct. Okay, I hope you are getting it. Uh, so friends, we will be taking more problems based on uh, functions. In fact, domain of functions, we will be discussing some more complex problems in our coming session. So don't miss this session and I will see you in the next session once again. Bye-bye.